The cyberspace or internet has profoundly impacted our world, transforming how we do business, learn, educate, shop, and so many other things. As a matter of fact, it has also transformed how we relate with our loved ones. In this cyberspace, a lot of good things can happen. Good friends can be made, business is built, homes built, so many opportunities for financial growth. Also, in this space, a lot of terrible, horrible things can happen. The question is, how do we navigate the murky waters of the cyberspace? I keep calling this spider space. Cyberspace in such a way that we are safe and we can be positively impacted. That is the question we'll be answering uh, today because it's all about risk impartation and mitigation of the cyberspace. It is We Can Deal, your favorite We Can Show, coming to you from the network service of the NTA. Almost all of us are members of the social community on the cyberspace. Please join this conversation because we want to hear how it has impacted you, the challenges you face, how you overcame, and so much more. I am not alone. I am with the deletable Tema. Before Tema comes on, my name is Patience Eloy Abba. Once again, thank you for keeping a date with us. Fantastic opening there, <laughs> patience. Always a delight to keep yeah, your company. Thank you. Amazing opening there, really. We're talking about the cyberspace. And all of us are members of the community, indeed. Mm -hmm. What is important is that, is it you? Or is it you? Or is it you who's committing fraudulent activities on the cyberspace? Oh. Who wants to rob me? Or is it me who's doing it to you? Mm. Well, I can vouch for myself, but can you? Can you vote for your relatives? Can you vote for your friends? Can you vote for your community? Because research shows that 43% of those who commit fraudulent activities against us are people who know us. 24% mm. are family, nuclear, extended, our relatives. And 12% are close and dear friends. So you ask yourself a very critical question. Why would someone who knows you and proposes to love and care about you, wish you ill. Well, let's find out together. We ask ourselves daily, what can we do better that will work for you? We're not in competition, but we challenge ourselves to do more, to make life better for us. Because already, we're in daunting times. We wish each other well. At least that's our mantra here at the NTA, yeah. to ensure that it's better for you and it's better for us. So we urge you once again to be a part of this conversation. We talk about the cyberspace, the risk, the impact, and how to mitigate the challenges. Because for us, it's all about making things better. My name is Thelma Obaze. Welcome to Weekend Deal. Weekend Deal. It's Weekend Deal, where we focus on you how to better your life. And by bettering yours, we're bettering all of ours. Today we're talking about the cyberspace. There's risk there, we know, but there's positive impact. What we're talking about now at the end of the day, how to mitigate those risks. There's a lot happening. There's good, there's better, and we're praying for the best. What's our background feature going to tell us? Let's see it. As Nigeria emerges as a digital powerhouse within Africa, its economic growth and societal advancement are intricately linked with its ability to effectively manage its cyberspace. However, amidst the rapid digitization, the nation faces multifaceted challenges in cybersecurity. Phishing scams, a prevalent threat, exploits unsuspecting individuals through deceptive emails or messages, posing a significant risk to personal data and financial security. Similarly, 
Malware infections, often disseminated through malicious websites or software, can compromise sensitive information and disrupt critical systems. Additionally, ransomware attacks, where malicious actors encrypt data and demand payment for its release, have become increasingly sophisticated and damaging. Moreover, Nigeria grapples with issues of digital inclusion, as not all segments of society have equal access to digital technologies and resources. This digital divide exacerbates existing inequalities and hinders the nation's overall progress towards a fully digitized economy and society. In addressing these challenges, effective regulatory frameworks are paramount. Nigeria must enhance its cybersecurity laws and regulations to adapt to evolving threats and technologies. This includes measures to strengthen data protection, establish incident response mechanisms, and foster collaboration between government, industry, and civil society. Furthermore, investing in cybersecurity awareness and education is essential. Empowering individuals and organizations with the knowledge and skills to identify and mitigate cyber threats can significantly enhance overall resilience. Public-private partnerships can also play a crucial role in bolstering cybersecurity capabilities, leveraging the expertise and resources of both sectors to enhance cyber defense mechanisms. Additionally, fostering a culture of cybersecurity within organizations is vital. Implementing robust cybersecurity policies and practices, conducting regular security assessments, and prioritizing employee training can help mitigate risks and minimize the impact of potential cyber incidents. Also, leveraging advanced technologies such as artificial intelligence and machine learning can enhance threat detection and response capabilities. By harnessing these technologies, Nigeria can stay ahead of cyber adversaries and proactively defend against emerging threats. Ultimately, effective management of Nigeria's cyberspace requires a comprehensive and collaborative approach, combining regulatory measures, awareness initiatives, technological innovation, and strategic partnerships. By addressing these challenges head-on and implementing proactive strategies, Nigeria can safeguard its digital future and unlock the full potential of its digital economy. Our discussion on Weekend Deal today will be on the risk, impact, and mitigation of the cyberspace. Thank you so much, Sam Ben. I mean, the cyberspace is, like I said, is a community that we all belong to. One negative fallout of the cyberspace is cyberbullying. And cyberbullying or online bullying, it's uh, simply using technology to threaten, intimidate, harass. Or simply say, make somebody feel terrible through uh, social media platforms. As bad as this is, sometimes I just sit back and imagine the impact of cyberbullying on children. And that's what our next short story will be dealing with. we we'll see that and then we can talk. Injuries of cyberbullying is that any information you post can stay as long as no one has access to delete that information. Now, children from age two, three are already going online. They have devices. They are connected to the internet. So they face various forms of bullying indirectly that we don't even know about. The silence epidemic of cyberbullying is ravaging the minds of our youth, pushing them to the brink of emotional collapse. You will notice their behavior suddenly change. They begin to take away themselves among people, the crowd, or they begin to act aggressively. Or you see some of them begin to take up some behavioral acts. And all these things just for them to be able to, you know, put up their own confidence or self-esteem again of what because of what they are passing through. While adults struggle to cope with the pressure, children are suffering in silence, their young minds grappling with the weight of online torment. It, the, the effect is, is huge. Even sometimes, some, some literature will tell you that the effect is more than the physical bullying. Because the physical bullying you can deal with. This, you don't even know that the children or people are going through it. The fear of judgment and rejection, especially from their parents, only exacerbates the anguish. So you as a parent, 
you what you need to do is to build the confidence in that child yes correct the child but still let the child know that you have a second chance to amend your wrongs but not joining the society to attack the child the statistics are alarming a staggering 34 percent of students have fallen prey to online bullying leading to emotional distress social isolation academic decline mental health issues if someone begins to act somehow try to find a way to stand by the person and one of the things people do again that is very bad if one should confide in you to share a secret with you on what he or she is passing through don't bring it out there however there is hope by nurturing resilience in our children we can arm them with a powerful shield against cyber attacks when i see videos of um, negative um, or, or cyber bullying that has happened online i show my daughter and i'm like this is it this is how it works come and sit with me let's watch it together do you understand she says yes so she already knows that that happens so whenever she sees it she's not surprised she already it, immediately there's a flash that says oh this is it 56 divided by 8 is equal to Seven. to combat this menace our educational six. institutions must take proactive measures implement comprehensive anti-bullying programs monitor online activities effectively establish self-reporting mechanisms collaborate with parents and mental health professionals it's it's a deliberate effort as a parent to make up your mind that i want to know and then after i know i want to help my children know now once they, once they know it's easy when they see the signs they know it's the science by joining forces we can create a safe supportive environment where children can strive online empowered with confidence and strength let us unite to break the silence and shatter the shackles of cyberbullying <laughs> ensuring our young minds can flourish in a digital world that could be a tool for growth not a source of pain ought to be a tool for growth and not a source of pain and you heard the statistics there over 34 percent of all our children are being trolled bullied online and sometimes it can lead to debilitating mental health challenges many thanks uma who also happens to be our producer for this package very detailed uh, feature there of course to contribute to our discourse here on the show today our guests are here let's welcome them engineer innocent Corey Corey is an um, information technology professional he's here to lend his expertise to our discuss and together we'll prefer solutions we'll get to see his profile <laughs> You're welcome. welcome, engineer. Welcome to Weekend You're Deal. You're most welcome. We do know that sometimes it's not even children bullying children. It's even adults who are online who perhaps they are jobless or they are demented or mentally challenged in some way. They begin to even throw children. But I want to look at organizations as well, engineer innocent, because um, these hackers don't just stop at WhatsApp sometimes. They delve into organizations and they are able to find a loophole. So while we're focusing on our children, knowing what they're doing and how to protect them and advise them, let's look into the bigger uh, organizations. What is on the mind of these people who delve in there? And how do they find such loopholes? Since we know that there are such people out there who are idle, sometimes evil, and they seek to penetrate any loophole created, what can organizations do to mitigate the risks and cover loopholes. 
Yeah, thank you so much for that question. In fact, it's um, one of those uh, aspects that we're finding quite uh, challenging, especially in Nigeria. A lot of organizations have not paid attention to it. First of all, I want to take it from uh, what Sadiq said about what we should do first to be online, because statistics shows that um, close to 90% of cyber attacks happens through the human error, right? The humans not doing what they're supposed to do right. That's why, first of all, before I delve into the organizations, we need to learn cyber hygiene, mm. right? Uh, there is, there's what we call a cyber hygiene because, uh, for instance, I mean, we know what hygiene means on your own personal hygiene. There are basic things you must do, like um, he mentioned. So that takes me to the organizations. Um, First is the organizations has to take it as a responsibility to say we have a problem. If you've not accepted that you have a problem, then there's no way you're going to do something about it. Mm. And then when you say I have a problem, then what do we do? Um, the basic thing they do for organizations do right now is cybersecurity awareness. Part of what we're doing here is awareness, but organization wide. There is um, uh, there's a need for cybersecurity awareness program that is enforced. And then the second thing is that um, every organization should have a policy. There is, I mean, there is IT policy, there is cybersecurity policy. There are standards that have been set uh, in the cyberspace, in the cybersecurity industry, that every organization should pay attention to. It gives guidelines. For instance, even in Nigeria, NIDA gives guidelines for every organization to have an a, a, um, IT policy. In that IT policy, there are IT security policy. And that policy specifies what you should do. And one of the basic you should do is awareness. Mm -hmm. Some, it, it requires you to do monthly awareness. And what so are awareness you, same as training? Yes, in a way, but it's beyond training. It's, it's, it's like building a culture of mm. sense of security online. Mm. That's, mm. that's why I say it's beyond training. Beyond training. And when you say training, it might be look like you want to acquire skill. Mm. But when you talk about awareness, it's like telling people that, look, today, this is what you need to do to stay safe. Change your password. Mm. Make sure that you don't give it out. Mm. Ensure that when somebody calls and says, I am from the engineering department, um, I'm repairing your computer, I need your password. Ensure confirm that the person so, is actually check. from there. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Like, like that. So okay. I think these are some of the mm. things okay. organizations basically should start okay. with. Okay. Uh, Taking uh, okay. precaution, uh, I, I had one new word today, cyber hygiene and making double show and all that are things we can do. But uh, this conversation is not done yet. We just started. But a break beckons. Don't go away. We'll be right back. But our focus today is on the cyber f uh, space, how to risk, impact, and mitigation. And then uh, Sufian has done a research. Let's see what he has then would we'll speak. The digital age, where technology and interconnectedness have revolutionized our lives. But beneath the surface lays a dark reality, the rise of hacking and cybercrime. The word hacking defines gaining unauthorized access to um, a computer system, um, personal information, or a network. Why the uh, word cyber fraud um, is any fraudulent activities carried out through the means of um, a digital device. So hacking and cyber fraud are two different words. However, hacking is um, an example of cyber fraudulent activities carried out on the um, cyber space. But not all cyber fraud activities are hacking. Hackers use various methods in order to compromise businesses and even national security. There are different methods of hacking and cyber fraud. And uh, for hacking, we have um, DOS attacks, we have man in the middle attacks, and we also have social engineering attacks amongst um, others. Um, for social engineering, we have um, phishing, we have um, pretest, we have um, uh, quid pro 
school also. And for uh, what social engineering means actually is learning people, deceiving them to, to gain access to a computer system or to retrieve important information. And man in the middle attacks is um, revolves around um, when an attacker intercepts uh, communication between two ends. That's what we call man in the middle attacks. And DOS attacks is when an attacker flood um, a, a computer system or a network with too much um, traffic which the um, network can take. And that will actually cause the network to uh, forcefully shut down. So the most common ones that, that, that we have, in, uh, that, that, that people experience often, social engineering attacks. And for cyber fraud, we have several methods of cyber fraud. Also, we have um, advanced fraud, which is usually called 419. We have card skimming, that's uh, when someone use a digital device to take information, to receive information from your ATM and clone your ATM. We have online shopping scam. We have um, romance scam. We have a lot of them. The effort to secure the cyberspace continues in order to combat hacking and cyber threat. All these attacks have um, a lot of impact on individual lives, on businesses and even on government structure. For example, individually and um, as a business owner, if one should suffer um, this attack, um, it can cause reputational damage, it can cause loss of personal information, it can even cause psychological um, distress. Uh, um, for both uh, individual and uh, for businesses. Another impact is identity theft. When the attacker um, uh, impersonates an individual or a business to carry out a fraudulent activity. And for um, government institutions, it can, um, the, the impact is so enormous that it can cause distrust in the, um, government activities. Even though in Nigeria we have some certain frameworks and laws that, that is established, to, to safeguard the digital space. One is the Cyber Crime Act, the Prevention and Prohibition of Act of uh, 2015. Another is the National Cyber Security Strategy uh, by the Office of the um, National Security Advisor, uh, which was enacted in 2014, um, but reviewed in 2021. Fine, we have these um, frameworks, we have these laws. Businesses in Nigeria, individuals, are, kept suffering from uh, several attacks. We can all play a role in managing cyberspace by being informed, taking precautions and reporting suspicious activities. You're watching Weekend Deal and we're talking about you and I. Indeed, all of us, and like we hear, all of us have a role to play, very integral role. It starts with asking yourself, why would I want to do something fraudulent that could cause psychological damage or challenge for somebody and cause them to lose money? What is on the minds of these people? Identity theft? Well, our guests are here. Let me now talk with um, Sadiq. You know, I was speaking with Engineer Innocent before and he was talking about organizations, how they can protect what they have. Because what you have in your company, organization or industry is of value to you. There's money, there's resource, there's skills, there's secrets. And someone is coming from outside, he hacks or they hack invisible people. They cause devastation and loss. We're talking about mitigation here today. What ought a, a company to do to mitigate? We've heard about hygiene from Engineer Innocent, you know. Can we go into more detail? Yeah, um, organizations can do a number of things to stay safe. One is on the technology side, they need to make sure that their technology infrastructure is up to date. So what that means is, for example, do they have antivirus running on those machines? Are the antivirus, are they updating? You know, these are the fundamental questions. Then the ne next stage is the softwares they have, are they even licensed? You know, these are some, some of the basic, basic things that they need to do from the technology side. Then from the uh, awareness side and training, they need to be able to train their staff regularly. Okay, for ex a, a typical scenario might be uh, you see a flash drive in the office space, maybe on the floor. What do you think? Like, you do pick it up, do you plug it into the machine? These are the questions that you need to ask yourself. Who even owns that flash drive that you found? Because it might be like a flash drive that has been affected 
mm. by a threat actor. These are all possibilities that are not far-fetched. Depends on the threat actor, what he's looking out for in that organization. But mm. these are the things that organization needs to do. And that training should not just be a one-off. And cybersecurity or think conversations around the cyberspace is not just for the IT side, from the IT, t for the IT team. Mm. Because you see a lot of organizations when it comes to cybersecurity, once you say cybersecurity, it's okay, ah, it's the IT side. No, no, no. Mm. I think it's, it's both a management problem like mm. and like um, um, is it basically it's an entire team problem. Oh. It's a problem that affects everybody within the organization. So everyone must get on board. Everybody must get on board. That security man that, that you put in your office, does he, what, does, what does he know? Does he know the basic information about staying safe? Mm. Like the way you dispose of your office documents. Mm. You know, time to time you produce office documents. How do you dispose them? Do you sh make sure that every paper is shredded before you throw it out? Mm. Or d does the cleaner just come, packs it up, everything, and then oh. throws it out? Because sometimes you get information, sensitive information that is left in this mm. paper. Wow. So you need to have, like, uh, there, there are, of course, industry standards that organizations can adopt. And when you adopt this organization, uh, uh, standards, standards. Yeah, it helps guide the organizations on the do's and don'ts. Mm. And then, of course, sometimes you have to uh, localize that uh, standard mm. to mm. your environment. Mm. And, of course, a lot of these organizations are really small organizations. And then they think, that, oh, no, no, we don't have the money for to implement this. You know, I think every organization... It is critical. Yeah, it's critical. They need to adapt some form of uh, preventative measure because it's cheaper to prevent than to like try in to, fact, <laughs> to <laughs> mitigate or to and cry and weep yeah. Yeah. afterwards okay um um, um innocent let's leave organization to normal human um people who are users of the cyber space we hear of um, some stories of happily ever after and ask them how did you meet your husband we met on social media how did you meet your wife she said hello to me on social media and today we are extending rings and then we hear horrible stories of people meeting and it is fatal personally what should young people do when they have this conversation with people who are telling them i like you can we meet what are the personal things we can do to ensure that um we don't have this stories that touch the heart yeah stories that touch your heart. <laughs> um, thank you for that one thing i want to pick out you talked about young people mm. right um i think the mistake we're making uh, as a society is allowing the young persons to go on social media unguided right because as a parent you know i mean some of us grew no, up no i'm talking about young adults so yes let's get there okay. let's get there okay. you see when you okay. when you talk about marriageable mm. right it means that they are not yet married mm. so they have an ideology the, the we have the gen z's mm. right mm -hmm. uh, okay and then um the understanding is that some of the persons we call young persons are born into technology you will agree with me yes right? true. so the orientation is different different yeah. Yeah. so now and they are being parented by people who do not understand technology mm -hmm. so there's a gap so we have to start from there okay good. even if you think that they are grown up to get married mm. They, they were born in technology. Mm -hmm. So the understanding of social media is that uh, that's the society they know. That's True. where they know. True. Mm. But unfortunately, the parents don't know that society. Mm. So the first we need to do, first of all, is to begin to guide them on how to take those uh, precautions we do physically online. Mm. Um, do not speak to a stranger. When you meet a stranger, try to know who the person mm. is. I mean, when um, your, 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 your dad or your mom see you, even if you're grown mm. with a guy, mm. you need to hide and see your boyfriend, mm. right? Yeah. <laughs> but on social media, they don't hide. You don't even know that he has a guy that has invited her to come to Lagos. Okay. Mm. You don't know. So the first thing we need to do is to help young persons understand that not every person on social media is real. True. That's the first we need True. to know. And then how do you find those who are real? There are yardsticks. You need to, your conversations that someone has with you every day gauges who the person is. Now, there is a side of verification. Hey. If you find things that, that you are so much hooked up with this person, mm -hmm. and this person is in, maybe you're in different towns, yes. right? And the person wants to see you physically. Try and find out whether that person is real. You have somebody there, even if you don't have, you could find a way to get to confirm yes is this person real 
do a background check. Your is this due diligence? Yeah, mm. due diligence. Um, but young persons will not want because there's a disconnect between the parents or the guidance or whoever that is a circle mm. around them. Mm. They want to, I mean, hide the relationship, relationship. until they come home with the person mm. and say, this is my guy or this is my lady. Um, so that's where the parents come or where the society comes in to say, um, we check each other. Okay, for instance, there are persons uh, of off air we're talking about auditing those who follow you online. Mm. And those, yeah, because the truth of the matter is that, I mean, it was quite weird. We talking have stalkers about and trolls. Yeah, people are looking for followership, but they are the people want the numbers. People are looking for the numbers. Yeah, the more you look for the numbers, <laughs> the more you're influenced by what you read, you mm. hear, you watch. And you become what you consume. <laughs> so most times, That's profound. yeah, most times these young persons are confused by what they consume. You know, this the, the, you started with happy ever after. Yes. Right. Yeah. You say, oh, if this person met online, yeah, we could. Yes. Could. Yes. Happen, yes. happen to me. Yeah. So the, what we need to do first, due diligence, get inciting you to get involved in educating people and say, even if it happens, right. Mm make sure you find a way to verify right then the third aspect of it if you're meeting someone you've not seen before meet in an open space i like See, that go thank with you somebody. Go, with go, somebody. go with somebody yeah, go with somebody and meet an open space and make sure that at least even if not your parents your closest persons know your movement know where you are right have a trail of your conversations with the person so that if anything happens, you could trail. I mean, mm. there's a story. No, have a life yeah. 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 Now, just to the girl from Nigeria. So, 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 so these are the things we need to do. Uh, but I still want to go back that beyond that, we need to begin to educate the homes on the danger of social media. As we are enjoying the, I mean, the good side of it, mm. we need to begin to tell our parents. Uh, that they need to know where the communities that their children, children belong, belong to. You need to belong there. Mm. Yeah, because you will I, not become your children's stalker. No, you don't need to become your children's stalker. You just need to be Follow there that. to know what they do. Okay, when you ask, I go back to it again. Who are your friends? Yeah. As a parent, you ask that question. Even when they are at a marriageable age, you want to say, I want to host your friends. Some parents are nice like one. very yes, good like nice that, yes, yes, just yes. to know. I do that, yeah, just to meet you. Yeah, 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 well, yeah. 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 No, but your, your child stays around and uh, they don't have friends. Mm. But they're happy. <laughs> yeah, they're happy. That's weird, right? They don't go out. They are inside. But, but they are hosting party online. Mm, indeed. Yeah. You don't know. Now, the question, right. when it happens, you say, oh my God, who did I offend? You didn't offend anybody. You didn't do the right thing. You not belong to the community to know what they're doing. Some of our children could even be these hackers we're talking about who are hacking into organizations. No, but they are human beings. Yes. Uh, the hackers are human. And some of them are in homes where somebody has not paid attention to what they are doing. Yeah, most of them are from homes, not so. Uh, I mean, a lot of them yes, are hacking yeah. from And we homes. hear that some of them are family members, some are friends, many live in our community. And some do it for pleasure. Hmm, yeah, yeah, some do it for pleasure. To just lay it down Temple and do this. Pain, huh? yeah, some do it. They <laughs> don't even. This is them. There are aspects of those, uh, uh, what we we'll call, I mean, some of them they call the gray hackers. They just want to test their skills. <laughs> yeah. Ethical hackers. Well, like yeah, we said no. now that we become what we consume. Some people start it like play, like play, like a hobby, like a game, and then it starts to consume them. They go from, is it catfishing or fishing or whatever, to doing big time fraud to the extent where they become renowned mm. and they become dangerous. Yes, and then talking about that, you know, another aspect of cyberspace is fake news. You know, you read some things and you're like, ah, ah, you know, and they use it to drive traffic. Is there a way we can actually verify what we read on social media? Let's say they just write that patience is a billionaire. How do how do people check? <laughs> but that's good news. news. Sorry, sorry. Uh, let me start for myself. <laughs> Patience suddenly becomes a billionaire. Good news. How will Tema or you check that it's not true? But let it be true, Sha. <laughs> <laughs> um, so once I see headlines like that, what I will do to put it in a scenario format is I'll just check on Google, do a quick Google oh, search. Okay. I'll say, okay, which other 
uh, news outlet is reporting that patience is a millionaire. Yes, billionaire. Billionaire. Sorry, yeah. billionaire. Yeah. Fifteen billion naira. Yes. Which yeah. other news is it? The, the is it the popular uh, household uh, mm. news media outlets? Mm. And who else is reporting it? If it's just a blog, then you start questioning yourself. Mm. That okay, it's just a blog that someone wrote an article about you. Mm. So you need to dig 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 deep, deep for, like dig deep and mm. try to understand exactly who it is. Mm. Then um, there are uh, like for example, if if I saw a picture of you, mm. like chilling in like tons and tons of cash well, you know what, what i could aim, i'm into that yeah. what i will do is just to put it in a scenario format mm. i would take that image yeah. put it up on google do a google search oh. like an, a re reverse yeah. image okay google will now show you where that picture has been like where who has published that picture so if you see just one of that picture then you begin to question okay that picture maybe is not real maybe it's just one person that uh, edited that picture and if you see multiple of it then you begin to say okay maybe maybe it's true and if it's like a news from uh, you can also uh, the, the person that posts that mm. if it's a social media influencer or an individual or whatever you can actually verify what kind of new news have they been posting in the mm. past are they real this are they genuine because that's what they call bots online what bots are is they're created by uh, threat actors to mm. give out fake news and you mm. as an ordinary person you may not know that this is not a a, but what a real individual from that? people have different things of, for different like reasons mm. some people do it just to spread false news about another person mm. to bring malicious, another person down yeah. malicious. some are even paid to do it uh, some thing. some are paid to do it you know it's, it's like a service that that are found in the in, um, in, in the dark web yeah. dark web is the hidden part of the internet that we don't see so you have it's a whole marketplace that people buy and sell things that all sorts of illegal stuff mm. so the idea is you see something you always want to verify mm. especially when it's sensational especially towards election that's when you mm. see all sorts of information coming about uh, different politicians and you want to ver even if it's your politician someone you follow mm. you want to verify that news that they said about him okay. is it true is it true Which, okay yeah. Well, it all boils down to due diligence. Due diligence, my sister. In okay, every so area. while we are doing all that, uh, we know that there is cyber fraud. But what are the consequences and uh, what are the implications of cyber fraud? NT Abuja will tell us more about that. The growing use of the internet in the last decade gave rise to a new area of law that has since come to be known as cyber law. As the digital landscape rapidly evolves, New legislations and regulations were needed to protect the rights and interests of individuals and organizations going online. With the digital interconnectedness comes a range of legal complications for those who violate the laws and regulations. These cyber laws address a wide range of issues from piracy and intellectual property to cybersecurity and freedom of expression in the digital age. The first law that was introduced against cyberspace violations in the world was uh, the Budapest Convention of uh, 2004. Nigeria is now part of the Budapest Convention. Also in Nigeria, we have our own uh, Cyber Crimes Act, which was recently amended in 2024. It came in force in 2015. And uh, those laws are in place to regulate are these uh, violations of the cyberspace. To me, from my own part, I think it is not a, a widespread law. People hardly know much about this law. There are so many laws, all of them which get their relevance from the Constitution. Um, we have um, laws like the EFCC Act. We have um, even the Penal Code. I think we have um, National Information Technology Development Agency. Uh, they, uh, they regulate some of these laws. They call it content moderation, to moderate the things that happen within the cyberspace. So we have the EFCC that actually moderates financial transactions. On daily basis, when you get to the Federal High Court, you will see there are so many cases of um, this year who being prosecuted. Many of them want you get them, they're jailed. Mm -hmm. Six months, one year, three years, some even maximum sentences. Mm -hmm. So I think it's, it's, it is just ignorance that makes people feel, okay, maybe this, there are no laws. There are laws from 2015, there was uh, an act 
uh, a law that was passed and then there was an amendment that was made uh, 20, 2024 that has been assented by the president already. It was passed around, uh, I think, end of December from the National Assembly and the Senate. There's a Data Protection Act, which essentially talks to in, uh, service providers. Because mm -hmm. number one, these are, these are the places where we push in our data. Exactly. Because if somebody has your data, there's every possibility yes. that he can intrude into your business. So there's a Data Protection Act that they keep, that if it is breached, they will be prosecuted and you will be compensated. How effective are these laws? And what are the consequences if not properly implemented? At the end of the day, you see people say, um, somebody scam me on my money. Who do I report to? Where do I go? There are no active awareness. People are not aware of where to go to when there is a particular cyber fraud or who to report to. And also, there are no forensic investigation and investigators enough. At the end of the day, you see that the number of forensic investigators we have against the number of crimes will not tell. Depending on the level of the crime, if found liable, convicted for misdemeanor offenses, um, simple offenses, or even felony, I can sue you for civil liabilities, and I can also take uh, criminal defamation of character, and also sue you for um, libel, because it now becomes something yes. on record. The law is already in place, but the enforcement, the bodies in charge of enforcing this law are nowhere to be found. They are missing. There is a cyberspace advisory council created by this act. Very few people know about them. And I really think the government should look into uh, creating or establishing a proper body. There are different uh, ways in which you can be prosecuted. Okay. Like you, the EFCC now are doing a very great job. You notice that. Uh, virtually every quarter you see uh, young men being paraded for cyber crimes. So, and then the Niger Nigerian Financial Intelligence Unit, NFIU, so are doing a lot in terms of the financial crimes. So, uh, basically, when you're caught, you'll be charged to court, and then when the court proceedings go on, you'll be charged according to the law. Regulatory authorities, such as data protection agencies and industry-specific regulators, have the power to investigate data breaches and cyber attacks. Interesting, isn't it? There's a way these people can be taken to court. But the thing is, how can they even be found? They are invisible. We just heard about the dark web. Often, how often are they caught? How often are they brought to book? Their laws, their policies, their legal implications. But how many have been able to fish out and get them to face the full wrath of the law? We're talking on weekend today about risk, impact, and mitigation of the cyberspace. Don't go anywhere and keep your experiences and messages coming in. A big beckons will take it. It is Weekend Deal, your favorite weekend show on TV. We asked you to join our conversation and you graciously joined us. I'll be reading out some of your messages now. Okay, so uh, somebody said, uh, in my opinion, I think we should be vigilant online. That's what we've been saying all day, all morning. Please let us know where you're writing us from and um, we would appreciate that. And then uh, another person has written to us and said, uh, whoa, it's a long word. He said, Good morning. I am thank God Victor from Taraba. Uh, <laughs> I must say and thank you all for the way Nigeria. Oh, thank you all for what you're doing. The only way Nigeria can escape from cybercrime is by let everybody be vigilant. Parents, make sure your children don't have access and stay and stay with your children. Hear them out. You are a parent. Understand your child. You are not. You are to share share your problems with. Let your children share your problems with you and your partner. For help, then the government or these internet experts, experts to build a, a website where both parents and children can express how they feel and how they feel, and they can talk when they are being bullied. So he said there should be a website where. Um, okay, so somebody now wrote. He said he is um, Ozigbe from Ojebe Ojebefu in Abuja. Please ask the experts. I found out that people use witchcraft. To see or read people's head or pin to get their passwords hmm. effortlessly. 
how can we stop this, please? Okay, <laughs> witchcraft. <laughs> uh, good morning, NTA. My name is Musa Ramat Baniya. I am from Kwara State. I'm a student. Please, how do I secure myself um, online? Okay, more messages are coming in. Well, yes, our guests can address uh, a few, uh, of, yeah, the few of them that have just. So, I mean, the one you know, the one I will ask you first now, witchcraft. So I had my pin inside my innermost mind. <laughs> I didn't write it anywhere. Your brain. Then somebody will come and get witchcraft. I know that ah, her password is X, Y, Z. How? There are a number <laughs> of uh, strategies, tools, and techniques that are used to get people's password. Okay. So to, to, to make it very practical, I was working with a colleague, and then we're trying to access a particular computer, mm. and we couldn't. Like, it was a home computer that was brought in for, for one of our bosses then. Mm -hmm. And my colleague was like, the password has to be... Mm, mm, and she said it. I said, how? I did it, and it worked. Computer opened, and then we were able to treat it. So th the idea is, she understood it was a child around a certain age bracket, so it was easy for her to guess. That was a typical scenario of how the password was able to... Um, like, get, was able to be uh, extracted. Uh. So now... For, for, for a broader perspective is, for example, you see a WhatsApp message that says, click here to win XYZ amount. Mm. By the time you click, sometimes if there's a payload, a payload means there's a nefarious software code around that. Mm. It can now be tapping your, your passwords, like whatever you key in. Mm. So that's why they said, I mean, we, we advise that whenever you see a link, and you're not sure it looks suspicious click on it. just leave it alone that fifty thousand that is there that is just just leave it it's not your own because <laughs> it's a bait in a lot of cases then of course there are other uh, hardware uh, devices that they put on a computer there's a third actors when they have physical access they can put it behind your uh, desktop and then begin to extract this information so the idea is to be vigilant when you're using your computer when you see anything that you don't understand like office just call the it guy say okay what's this I don't understand. It's like a flash drive. What is it? I don't understand. So you need to be able to ask questions. So this thing about social engineering, we, we, we hammer on it a lot because most of this that happens is not through witchcraft. Okay. Uh, sorry, I'm a scientist. It's all about <laughs> being very vigilant. You have to be vigilant. Okay. We need to go to Patakot now. They yes. want to join this conversation. And what they're taking a look at is the risks of online borrowing and loan sharks. Patakot, we know you're there. What did you find? When you talk about the advancement of tech in our world, it is really huge. You have e-learning, have access to um, ed ed educational resources, they learn at, your, at their own pace. Let's say you lost your phone, you want to block your car, you don't have to go to the bank, you can just send email or use self-support services. So a lot of things it has, it has actually done. The development of technology has significantly affected our daily lives. It empowers us to perform tasks more easily aids communication from far distance and made the access to financial services more convenient. Now, we have mobile money which has eliminated the need to go to the bank as people can now access financial services from any location through their mobile phones. From mobile money to digital lending, platforms that offer lower interest rates faster approval of loans and more flexible repayment terms when compared to the traditional banking system. Indeed, these are opportunities that cannot be turned down. You know that my work is my She just said to me, I said, I'm going to do it. 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 Hey, now this loan shark we are take food and this loan from. Ah. Ever since we are just taking this loan, just worry my life. They embarrass me. Now they don't carry me for obituary. Every day they increase the amount. They are making it very hard for me now to pay. Can you imagine? You see the nonsense. Thank you. You could just try find way to pay them. That's what these people they do. 
The rampant activities of Nigerians unregulated lending platforms, also known as loan apps, have earned them the name Loan Sharks, often operating outside the legal and financial ecosystem. These companies are known to prey on vulnerable individuals and small businesses, trapping them in a circle of debt, depression, and anxiety. I started getting calls, threatening calls. If I don't pay back my loan, they will uh, block my account since they have my BVN. They will put my face on all social media platforms as a, as a criminal, as a thief. They finally sent my pictures to all the contacts, of a few of my contacts uh, and list. In fact, one of those calls they made was that they would come to my house, they have my address, and they would pick me up. I figured out that the problem I, I encountered with them is that I didn't go through their terms and conditions. I didn't know that that terms and condition is responsive and I had to click it for me to see in details. When I wanted to pay and my payment was split to two and I didn't know it was split, I had to pay completely thinking that I've paid the loan already and they were calling me. So I went back to check again, I saw that it was split and I had no money to settle the loan. I didn't know that their interest rate was that high. I didn't actually go through it because I was just desperate for the money. It was after taking the loan I saw the, I saw the interest rates. The financial difficulties faced by debtors can lead to social and psychological consequences. How can these sharp practices be checked? First of all, you need to ask yourself, do you really need this credit? Number two, have you really researched the terms and conditions of this credit? Because I... I I'm aware that there are some that have tenors of less than a week. So when you give someone a loan and you're already breathing down the person's neck in less than a week, then it's a, it's a challenge. And number three, I ask, do you really need the loan? How profitable is the venture you want to involve the money in? Are you collecting it just to bridge a gap till the salary comes? Or are you collecting it because you're hungry and you need to get the next meal? So all those things are important. You need to ask yourself that question before you get involved in borrowing. The proliferation of predatory lending online shops poses significant risks to borrowers. By implementing strict regulations, enforcing legal sanctions, and promoting public financial literacy, government can protect citizens and create a healthier financial system that safeguards against predatious practices. Indeed, uh, the government will need to protect citizens. And I also think that these online uh, bon uh, loan givers, I don't want to call them sharks now, should have offices where people can assess them. Yes, you're online, but let's have a physical structure because I've had experiences where if someone who has never borrowed before, you're being harassed to come pay monies that you know nothing about. So a whole lot of sanitization should be done. <laughs> We're wrapping up our conversation mm -hmm. now. We've been talking about risk. Um, impact and mitigation of, on the cyberspace. Engineer Innocent, what are you saying goodbye with, briefly? Okay, well, I think the first thing is for us to become good digital citizens. Mm. And that means we need to be careful uh, what we do, take responsibility of what we do online, understand what your rights are, understand what you need to do to be safe. And the, like we've, we've said it here, um, the way you take your safety serious offline, make sure you take that seriousness online. Guide everything, your data, your details, your password. What do you share online? Don't share everything. Yeah. Don't let people know everything because it's what they use to get back to you. Mm. Okay. And like the, the, the final thing, like they say in cybersecurity, is that look before you click. Okay. Oh, okay. Sadiq. Cybersecurity is a shared responsibility. Mm. So it's not a responsibility for the parent alone or the child. It involves everybody within the household. Then from the organizational standpoint, it involves the management, top management, and the bottom management, bottom uh, team. Yeah. So it's a shared responsibility to cut across every individual, every team. So everybody needs to play his path. Okay. And don't 
overshare information. So let's all own it. <laughs> Management, do your part. Yeah. Do your part. Nigerians, do your, your part. part. Watch that neighbor. Watch that relative. Yeah. Watch that friend. They may love you. They may say it. <laughs> Some of them are hacking you real time. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, so I, I, we've come to the end of the show. I was good. See, there's one question I didn't ask. Because I made, I, I said how, imagine if this you do it to my chopping now. Apple. They've asked us to begin to observe the closing formalities. We are closing. No, not him and then be talk, keep talking. Okay, so I was going to ask him how we make money online because I just said if patient becomes a, a millionaire. The knuckle, you don't, uh, you don't stop it. He doesn't even. <laughs> 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 I mean, Patience is a billionaire, not in the medicine. No, 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 no